Hey there, Captains. It's Reem again with another episode of Thank Gar It's Friday. Uh, continuing along with small ships, we are moving on to the Pelta. Before we go through that, though, just a bit of housekeeping. Uh, last week, Ion Radio covered the World's uh, Tournament at Adepticon for Star Wars Armada. It was great coverage. Uh, if you're interested in the competitive scene and you haven't seen that yet or heard about it, uh, find your way over there, watch it, great games uh, to watch. Uh, 13, 14 games in total I think there were recorded. Great, go watch it. Also at Adepticon, Rapid Reinforcements 2 was announced to be coming in the summer, along with um, the announcement that there's going to be a Worlds next year at Adepticon. So the competitive scene supported by AMG and just... Um, Star Wars Amada, supported by AMG, is continuing. So much to celebrate there. Um, so those are just the big news items in case after finding here you hadn't heard that yet elsewhere. Uh, so we'll go back to the Peltas. Uh, and as we get into the Peltas, I just want to preface this by saying both versions of the Pelta, if I had to pick like a top five faction-defining cards for Gar, both versions of the Pelta um, would be there. Hopefully by the end of the video, uh, you'll kind of see just how important they are. So with that, we will get into them. Uh, we have two versions of the Pelta, uh, the Medical and the Transport uh, Frigate. Um, they both have five base hull. They both have an Evade, a Brace, and a Redirect, which really helps their tankiness. That's a great defensive suite, uh, especially on a small... Um, as far as uh, their command stats here, they both have Command 2. The Medical Frigate has uh, Squadron 2, where the Transport has Squadron 1, and they both have 4 Engineering, also great uh, for a small. It makes both of these um, very efficient uh, little logistics uh, ships or support ships. For their nav chart, uh, pretty decent. Uh, one has double clicks at each, and then at speed 2 they have a click in both locations, so pretty decent nav chart. Uh, the only thing holding them back is, and what I'd say what keeps the Pelta in check from being like overpowered, other than just efficient, is their nav chart. They're limited to speed 2, technically speed 3 if you want to put engine techs on them, but these are not a ship that would do well with engine techs in my opinion. So speed 2 is what kind of keeps them back, um, but also kind of keeps them safe because these are support vessels. Um, as far as flak goes, the medical Pelta has one blue flak, so it has some range, but not terribly efficient, but will help out in a pinch. And the transport has blue-black, um, so it can still help at range, but then also better if the squads are swarming that Pelta in particular. Uh, for dice, uh, very similar. It's uh, two red and a blue out the front, a red and a blue out the side for the medical, and two red out the rear for the medical. Transport's the same, except for instead of blue dice, it has black dice. So definitely a little bit more close range of a ship. Uh, it's 49 points for the medical Pelta, 45 for the transport. They both have officer slots, support slots, uh, fleet uh, support slots. And um, the transport has defensive uh, retrofits, while the medical team has offensive retrofits. Um, so let's just go through slot by slot. And I'll just kind of highlight um, some of the things that I think both, uh, or that either Pelta is uh, good at and what you can see them um, taking. So both versions of the Pelta, um, as base, like if, if you don't want to put on them, you just want to keep them cheap. Honestly, their, their biggest um, use is just projection experts. That engineering command... You can spend two points to send two shields. You have four engineering, so you send use two of the four to send two shields to something else. You can regenerate one. It's very, very uh, powerful, very supportive. Honestly, either uh, Pelta coming in with just projection experts is fine. It keeps them cheap, um, keeps them useful. Uh, the next, if you do have uh, projection experts, the next slot you're likely to fill if you're going to fill a slot. I'd say is the fleet support. Generally munitions resupply or parts resupply. I have seen uh, you can do bomber command center if you're using a lot of bombers, so a lot of Y-wings, ARCs, 
um, stuff like that. Comsnet is kind of a niche case. Generally, I would say Peltas want to use their dials. But if you have spare tokens laying around from like Tarkin or something, uh, Comsnet can help uh, get those to appropriate ships. Uh, slicer tools could potentially work on a Pelta, but I would say they're too slow uh, to really threaten it. They can be easily avoided, so uh, generally avoided. And other ones are just kind of, if you see a need for them, repair cruiser, jamming barrier, they're both pretty niche. That's if you want them. The Peltas could do it. Um, it's just they're generally not terribly useful cards uh, as base. So let's say you take parts resupply. Uh, either ship can be doing this here. Um, on the medical, the next most popular one, I'd say, is probably your offensive retrofit. The medical Pelta, if we look back at this, does have that squadron too. So in a pinch, you can actually make this um, little pocket carrier. You can do something like boosted comms, uh, be able to command a couple of squads with quite a bit of range. You can do um, expanded hangar bays to do three. Uh, some people will be um, doing Yularen. Uh, Yularen, if you have a token, uh, you can get up to four squadrons with the Pelta Medical Frigate. Five if you have Expanded Hangar Bay. Uh, a reason to do that is it's somewhat common to take Fighter Coordination Team. Uh, if you're like using a fleet of all Peltas, or um, Peltas as carriers, not so much as uh, support ships, you can do fighter coordination teams, and that is one way to get uh, ARC 170s into the fight since they are speed 2. Um, so that is an option, fighter coordination teams. So if you're going carrier, you can do like booster comms, fighter coordination teams, expanded hangar bay, fighter coordination teams. Other popular ones that I have seen are like proximity mines. If you have the points, and you don't know what to spend on, spend them on, you have Peltas, Proximity Mines gets you two mines. Uh, if you have a plan for them, they can be kind of fun, uh, kind of niche, uh, but definitely fun to use. Reserve Hangar Decks, if you're using a bunch of V19 Torrents. Um, hyperspace Rings, I have tried in the past. Um, that's another thing to do with arcs, if you just want to set them towards the middle of the playing field. It uh, allows you to just stall, or stall on your deployment and such. Uh, any of those I can see being used or have a reason to be used on a, on a Pelta. Anything else, you definitely got to have um, a plan for, uh, at least on the medical. Uh, we'll go over titles. Uh, there is FB88, and that is before you reveal a command, you may discard your top command dial. Zoom in a bit there. Uh, so basically, skilled first officer, uh, but repeatable at four points. Uh, I'd say this is a fine title if you're just picking up the Pelta, if you're like new to the Gar faction or new to using Peltas, and there's a Pelta that you want to have like engineering and navvying maybe, or you just don't know how you're going to use it yet. Um, this is a good uh, little support title to help you out, get a better feel for the ship. That way, if you mess up your dials... Um, it is a way to um, correct them. Uh, most people won't waste time like slicer tooling a Pelta or like, uh, I guess if you get the comms noise crit, that could change your dial, but that's generally not worth taking a four point uh, title for. The other title is TB73, uh, and that is after you deploy, you gain one additional defense uh, token that is an evade. Uh, for five points, I have taken this title if you have the points left and you have a Pelta, like if you have, if you're at like 390 some points, you're trying to figure out how to kind of fill out your fleet. Um, the extra evade, especially if you only have one Pelta, uh, is pretty useful, especially if you're matched up against like um, Onagers or like Patriot Fist, having that extra redundant evade is very useful. Uh, if you're running like all Peltas or for whatever reason, if your Admiral is on a Pelta, it's definitely useful to have that extra um, defensive capability on it. So that is why I'd use uh, this title. It's a great title. Evade is uh, pretty strong uh, in, Amarta, in Amata's current uh, meta. We will go to officers, which I skipped. As far as officers go, um, there's 
kind of whatever you whatever you want. I would say Clone Captain Zack isn't useful. Wolf isn't useful. Barris isn't that useful. Silver isn't useful. Just in my opinion, I think if you're going to use Silver, you generally want to put that on a ship that can go speed 3, which uh, Peltas does not fall in that category. Adigalia, I've used on a Pelta. Once again, if your Admiral is on the Pelta, having those redundant tokens uh, makes it so that you kind of get the redirect effect even if they are accuracy in your redirect. It's only three points. Um, otherwise, um, these are good ships to have like Hondo on. If you need Hondo in your fleet, you just toss them in there, uh, toss them on your Pelta. Clone Navigation Officer. Uh, can be useful. It's another way to get tokens out to your uh, friendly ships. Or if you're doing that uh, Ularan build with all Peltas, this is how you get the squad command or squad token on your Pelta to activate those uh, four squads, two natively and then two from the token. Um, otherwise, um, just kind of what else uh, you feel like that you may need, you know. Everyone has their own um, opinions on what could be useful or not. If you're running Luminara and you have the points, expert shield text to help keep you safe from squads could be worth it. Uh, skilled first officers, if you have the points, uh, skilled first officer can be great in case there's a turn where uh, you really need a nav or you really need to try and kill something, you can get a con fire in. Especially if you're using projection experts, generally they will just... Uh, Q engineering the whole game, but if you ever do need to switch off, um, having a skilled first officer uh, in the slot uh, can definitely work well. Uh, we'll cover the one different slot here on the Pelta Transport. Uh, Pelta Transport gets the defensive uh, retrofit. A couple of fun options I have seen here is if you have your Admiral, once again, you can do electronic countermeasures. It really starts making this Pelta pretty expensive, though, especially if your Admiral's on it. Um, it makes it what, almost too much of a juicy target and still not that tanky. Um, most commonly, what I will see on a Pelta, if they do use the defensive retrofit slot, is reactive gunnery. Because uh, they do have those double red for the rear shot, so pretty decent salvo, especially if you have like intensified firepower in the fleet. Uh... And other things that I have theorized but not used is cluster bombs. Uh, Pelta's one weakness, I would say, or their, one of their major flaws is if they get swarmed by squads, um, they can die somewhat fairly easily from that. So having cluster bombs as like a deterrent to that, especially if they are relying like on a key ace like Merrick or Lando, um, just having something to make it pretty um, threatening uh could potentially work but for five points if it was like a two or three point upgrade i think you'd see it more often but at five points it's kind of hard to justify that in the event that you don't run up uh into squads so uh that's kind of a overview of how i'd build peltas or different ways that you can use peltas i'd say 60 percent of my games or uh fleets that i build peltas in are just this though, projection experts and parts resupply or munitions resupply, uh, depending on if I'm using like SFATs or if I have electronic countermeasures in the fleet. Um, just uh, using medical over transport. Uh, the two main differences here are the transport is just that little bit cheaper. So if you don't need the squads, if you're not going to use it as like a pocket carrier or anything, and you're not doing like proximity mine shenanigans or reserve hangar deck shenanigans. I generally go with the transport. Uh, it saves you a couple points because it is a little bit cheaper base. And also it just has that slightly better flak. Um, you do lose the blue dice in range. I've generally found though that the peltas tend to be in <laughs> two spots. They tend to be either just on the edge of like getting their long range dice in or something's like rushing them and they're gonna be in close. So the the black dice on the transport isn't all that much of uh, a negative uh, as much as I found. Um, I'm trying to say, uh, what else what about the Pelters? One other point. Um, as well as just providing the support uh, with the projection experts, 
I do also just want to point out that these are pretty scary at range. Like if you get behind them, uh, obviously the two reds, the two reds out the front, uh, the red and blue out the side. If you're using like Tarkin and these end up with like Confire tokens, or you have like Intensify Firepower in the fleet, uh, don't discount the chip damage that the Peltas can do. If you're running, that's why I think um, Double Venator, Double Pelta is somewhat of a common um, Gar list at this point, in different flavors. And just because, depending on how you activate, like if the if the if your big hitters go first and like cripple a ship, the Peltas can you know kind of chip in and finish it off, especially you know with these one or two dice pools getting like one red crit or you know a red double or just even a red hit it helps stress tokens that are already um uh stressed uh they can help get those extra crits in and in reverse if you're trying to delay with your big ships you go with the peltas and you know if you get that three damage out the front uh or you know damage out the side you just kind of chip away at that zone that you're going to be hitting at with the big ship because oftentimes if you have like one big shot you know they'll brace redirect or if they have ecm or they'll just re or if they have ecm they'll just redirect and then they'll like get everything on the shields and nothing will get through on hull if you chip away at that main zone that you're shooting at it makes the redirect uh you know a lot a lot worse than the fact that your main shot is going to be getting hull damage into the ship itself so don't discount uh, the Peltas as a support aspect um, of your damage profile. Don't like let them lag so far behind whatever your projection experting that they're not in the fight. These aren't flotillas, these aren't GR-75s or anything. Get them in the fight, um, trail them along because they're only speed two. That's the only reason how come they're not up in the front is they're only speed two. Uh, and get them in there, get them contributing. Uh, I'll be surprised uh, what Peltas can do. <laughs> I will say, though, it is funny enough, Peltas, without any dice fixing, their reds are a little bit unreliable. But in my experience, if you have, like, two Peltas, and for whatever reason uh, one of the Peltas dies, the other Peltas just must sense, you know, the need for vengeance. Because as soon as one dies or gets crippled or blown up, the, the remaining Pelta, when it rolls, you'll see it roll, like, double red or um two red double hits like for four damage or you know accuracy crit you know just these annoying uh critical dice rolls will come out of the peltas at that point which is always kind of funny but with that that is all my thoughts on the pelta definitely defining feature of gar if you're not using them uh give them a shot uh if you like what you sound hear about peltas you're not playing gar it might be a good using to uh give them a go if there's any uh, niche builds that people want to point out, uh, I know if you want, you can really kit these out for like 80 or 90 points to do uh, something uh, very niche. Uh, it's always kind of fun to see those. But until uh, next time, uh, when we start covering medium ships, uh, you all have a good one.